Genghis Khan, an inspiration to the nation he led and to Mongolians today. Mongolia is a rugged land bordered by China and Russia. In winter, temperatures chill to minus 40. In summer, they soar to 40 degrees Celsius. The mountains and steppes make farming challenging and survival tough. Every season, one million nomads move their gurs in search of fresh pasture for their animals. But this nomadic lifestyle is under threat. Climate change is creating a shortage of water and pasture. Overgrazing is causing soil erosion, allowing the Gobi Desert to expand. Droughts and successive harsh winters have killed 10 million livestock in the last 10 years. When herders lose their animals, their way of life is lost. Unable to feed their children, nomadic families fled to the cities where they found unemployment and high living costs. <laughs> Gama Ulzakan, her husband and three children were herders who were forced to migrate to Ulaanbaatar five years ago. Life was bleak for Gama and her family, juggling unemployment and motherhood in one of the capital's Gur districts. Gur or tent districts have water supply problems. With no system to collect sewage or wastewater, the groundwater becomes contaminated and this spreads contagious waterborne diseases. Today, almost half Mongolia's population of 3 million live in Ulaanbaatar. This includes 4,000 street children living in dark underground tunnels beneath the city. Poverty is grinding Mongolians down. 50% of people earn less than $2.60 a day and half the population is undernourished. The cost of food, housing and transport rose 5,000% when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1990. With Soviet financial support evaporating overnight, Mongolia was catapulted from communism into democracy. The market economy forced mass layoffs from state-owned Russian factories. Unemployment, poverty, alcohol abuse, domestic violence and crippling social problems challenged the spirit of the people. But these descendants of Genghis Khan are proud and resilient people. They're determined to turn their country around. If you get people to lend them some money, get started in a business, they can make money. They become independent. Um, it keeps the family together because the wife, 80% of our clients are, are women. The wife drags the husband in to help in the business by carrying raw materials and doing heavy work. She earns enough money to feed the children, clothe the children, get them to school, and they become a unit and they, and they become more prosperous. In May 1995, World Vision set up an area development program in Ulaanbaatar. Benefiting 350,000 people, these Gur dwelling Mongolians now have access to clean water, food, agricultural training, health care, and almost 30,000 children now attend school. But World Vision's Mongolia commitment is to long-term sustainable development where empowered communities solve their own problems. Since 2005, World Vision has offered microfinance loans to qualified entrepreneurs who live within development communities. <laughs> Without this microfinance, poor entrepreneurs fall prey to loan sharks, with exorbitant monthly interest rates as high as 200% per annum. With no collateral or credit history, new entrepreneurs are denied bank credit. Vision Fund Mongolia, a World Vision sister company, offers proven entrepreneurs small loans, which create employment, rebuilding the economic engine to help lift their community out of poverty. First, up to eight entrepreneurs come together to create a community bank. In Mongolia, these banks are called solidarity groups. Then the entrepreneurs apply for micro loans. They prove they're trustworthy, have good work ethics and sound business ideas. Borrowers guarantee each other's loans, support one another's businesses and keep their own books. Then, micro-loans are given 
as little as $50 can enable a business to develop or expand. Thriving businesses create more jobs, generating additional goods and services, benefiting the whole community. Best of all, poor entrepreneurs are good credit risks. They repay their loans 98% of the time, and when the loan is repaid, it's recycled and reinvested in another entrepreneur, beginning the cycle all over again. When Gama's family moved to Ulaanbaatar, she did odd sewing jobs. Her daughter was enrolled in World Vision's child sponsorship program, enabling her to attend school. Through child sponsorship, Gama heard about Vision Fund loans. World Vision trained her in basic sewing skills, then Vision Fund provided business training until she qualified for a loan. Before her loan, Gama was earning $183 a month. Her first loan was for $90, and over the last two years, she's taken out a total of five Solidarity Group loans. These loans gave her working capital to grow her business, helping her purchase a sewing machine and material. Today, her current income is $456 a month. Gama plans to grow her business so that one day she can produce and sell European-style clothes. That is her dream. In 2009, Vision Fund International loaned almost $540 million in small business loans to over 600,000 hard-working entrepreneurs, sustaining almost 850,000 jobs in developing countries. The ripple effect reaches beyond families, enabling more jobs, eventually sustaining whole communities, and positively changing the lives of 2.2 million children worldwide. Today, Mongolia faces many challenges. It's expected to struggle for the next 20 years, and ongoing development assistance will be essential. However, there is hope. Young Mongolians are educated and innovative. They have strong work ethics and want to expand household business enterprises. But they need us to lend a hand with a loan to rebuild working pride in their community one of the very best ways to fight poverty. Restoring dignity and confidence is fueling the Mongolian entrepreneurial spirit, helping people reclaim community pride in the land Genghis Khan left behind. To lend a hand to World Vision's microfinance program in Mongolia, call 0800 800 776 or log on to www.worldvision.org.nz forward slash microfinance.